Uh, typically, by the way, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm, I'm, I was crying a little bit with this episode. Uh, typically, with anime, you know, I, I do get emotional with a lot of anime. You know, a lot of romance stuff and uh, darker stories. I'm not. I'm a straight guy that's never been afraid to show my emotions. I'll cry if something makes me tear up, and if it really proves they can, you know, show emotion. I apologize, by the way, I apologize, folks. I'm trying to keep my composure with this, um, but it, it's kind of hard. Um, but anyways, welcome back to another anime review. Today we're going to be looking at Danganronpa 3 episode 10, Side Despair. Uh, probably one of the saddest things I've seen in anime in a while, uh, to be honest with you. So I think this is, for the Danganronpa series, this is probably one of the most dark and just depressing things I've ever seen in a long time. So we start off with, you know, um, Yukazome and um, Chisa together, and, or Nanami, excuse me, I'll, I'll say her name like that. And, you know, they are together, and it looks like all is fine. There's some, I, I think I think Nanami kind of have a, had a feeling that there was something wrong here with um, Yukazomi, but she kept quiet about it because she was her only, like, person that was with her in the tunnel uh, leading somewhere, so she kept quiet and kept following her. Meanwhile, on the outside, um, Junko is basically over Sok uh, so Saki over there. So Sokka, 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 I always call him Saka just because it's an easier way to say his name. Um... You know, he has lost against the wave of um, reserve corps students, and despite him trying his best, he can't fight it. He can't fight them all back, so he has lost. But we really, what we really learned from this is that, as a lot of people have predicted, you know, he was really in love uh, with Monokata. So that was definitely something that I think we all predicted in general, but it was now at least confirmed. That's why you know, it's, he's always kind of been weird around Monokata and uh, Yukazome together. But more so, you know, uh, Junko holds it against him and says that, you know, she has pictures of him, you know, f looking at his picture lo lovingly and stuff like that. And he is now then forced to apparently betray Monokata. So I'm curious where that's going to lead uh, in the further story, probably in the future arc. We, we're just going to see some of that betrayal somewhere, maybe, if not already. So I'm very curious about that. Now, the uh, rest of the classes, including, you know, uh, Yukazome and Nanami, all together reach a red door. Now, behind that red door is this, an elevator. Fans of the game know what this elevator leads to. It's not a good place. Um, you know, I, I knew where this was leading to right away, but I didn't know it was leading to what it ended up being, essentially. And, yeah, um, with um, with Yukazome and Nanami, again, together, you know, she's really touchy-feely with this, and it was very interesting. I, I, I knew right away there was something amiss with that. But what's funny about this is that we see... Nanami get pushed into the elevator, we see Yukazomi clearly under mind control. At the same time, the rest of the class arrives down into the the, uh, the classroom scenario, which is the judgment room, which from the games, if everyone plays the games or everyone knows about them, they know this is the place where the class trials take place, where someone gets punished. And we have Junko showing exactly that. We have, you know, game over for Nanami. And probably what what really took me the most surprise and what really fucked me up the most and I'll, I'll be honest with you was what came next the series of events that came next you know um we had i'm, I'm serious I, like i wanted to ball my eyes out with this part but it was just it was a heavy heavy burden to watch the scene we have nanami having to suffer through a dungeon that's very similar to her, her gaming uh, concepts because she is the ultimate gamer and so junko prepared this really devastating trap filled dungeon which has traps like we're spears come out of the ground and, and pierce through her feet you have giant boulders coming behind her it's, it's almost comical in a way but you see her struggling to get through this thing and you don't feel the comedy aspects of it. you feel more so just emotionally distraught where she's walking limping because she's had spikes inserted into her legs into into her arms you know she's had a weird giant balls hit her in the face it's really disturbing really graphic and i was very surprised that this scene, this emotional, I think it was maybe like five or six minutes long, was so depressing to me. Like, honestly, I felt so depressed. I, I went into a darker spot. It, it was really something else. And what was even more depressing is when you see the goal in front of her and she thinks that that's going to lead out where I knew that was going to lead anywhere out to somewhere safe. She goes inside the room and, as you can see from here, it gets killed by an onslaught of spears. Which, you know, that really was what got me really kind of upset was that part right there we see that meanwhile though the hell class has been watching this thing they've been forced to and they can't move because the video has caused 
a already mind effect on them that's keeping them in, in, in place and they're not able to move and they're all being under mind control. This is where they become the children of despair. Junko says that this is what's going to happen to them. They're going to be falling in for despair and just be like her exactly. So this is how they became like that if you guys and girls did not know. Um, so we got to finally see how that happened. Now, what's I think probably the more emotional part, this is where I actually cried a little bit and more so cried the most of this episode, was we have Nanami, you know, trying to stand up when she sees um, Hajime or Izuru there. And what sucks about this is that he can't remember her at all. He's, he looks at her and I think he feels something for her, but he can't remember anything about her because his, all of his memories were erased and, you know, the whole different persona was put on top of him. And despite her trying to live and trying to get up and trying to help him because she said she loved everyone, she falls finally to death because she just lost too much blood. And what's funny about this is that Izuru picks up her pen, which is a, it looks like a Galaga item. Um, he picks it up and he starts weeping. So he clearly, inside of him, you know, Hajime is somewhere in there. And he remembered, you know, the pain of losing her. Overall, you know, this was an episode that I, I watched and I wanted to cry more. I still kind of want to cry. It was a very deep and dark episode. Um, you know, it, it's one of those episodes that you see and you really get emotionally attached to. So, um... You know, I, I do apologize if I sound kind of wimpy with that, but it, it happens. Anyways, guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this review. As always, please hit the like button, subscribe button, share button. You know the whole nine. I will talk to you later. Have a blessed night, everyone. Bye-bye.